Let's make some of my better than hamburger helper, hamburger helper-ish meal. Hey everybody, it's me Hetty, and today I'm going to share with you how I make my uh, Chili Mac cheeseburger version DIY, in my humble opinion, much, much better than a regular, just straight out of Hamburger Helper. Believe me, raising my kids, I had, I used a lot of Hamburger Helper. And when they were still young, I came up with, I'll have to do that for a different video. I'm not doing it today because I didn't mix it up separately. But anyway, I'll have all the right spices in here. Uh, I know I'm skipping around, but I've already got, I, and I always triple my batch. The instructions down below will be for a one pound package of meat, okay? And you can double it, triple it like I'm doing because we're going to have leftovers and lunches from this. So, there you go. And without further ado, let's get started. I've already got my, this was some of my frozen hamburger meat. I've already, uh, I let it sit out for a little while and then I put it in here and got it uh, loose again. So, there you see, as you can see, I don't have any fat in mine because it was already drained before I ever put it away. All right. And in here, I'm adding, I have, I think this is about the equivalent, this is all I had left. This is about two and a half uh, caramelized onions. You don't have to be caramelized, this is what I had in the freezer. And this is, even though it's cooked down, doesn't seem like it, this is about two and a half bell, green bell pepper. The bell pepper color wouldn't matter for this anyway. Okay, I'll go over my other ingredients with you. And then I'll give this a good stir. Well, starting off the bat, I've got three cups of beef stock. I have four and a half cups of just elbow macaroni. I had a little bit left over for one, one box and then I had an unopened 16 ounce. That's, hence, that's the little bit of over. And then I'll go over my ingredients. I also have uh, a quart of milk right here, four cups. I may add more and I may top it up with water. I never know until I get the pasta in the skillet, especially when I'm tripling the recipe. The amounts for one pound of hamburger meat will be down below all of my spices. I'm not gonna just go through everything. Just gonna tell you what I'm throwing in. Chili powder, cornstarch, brown sugar, garlic powder. All right, I'm not putting that in yet. I'm just, I was just showing you what I have. Paprika. I'm using kosher salt. You'll, I'll have the measurements down if you're using just regular table salt. Here you can't see, that's onion powder. And I freshly uh, ground up this pepper uh, also off camera. And what else? I think that's it. And I may or may not throw in some diced tomatoes. We'll see. All right. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and all my stuff's cooked. If you were going to cook everything, you'd cook it in the pot. You would then have your bell peppers and onions minced up and ready to go. And if you got your hamburger meat, uh, you'd put in your onions and bell peppers. Now, the onions and bell peppers, you've got onion garlic powder and all that. And I'm probably going to throw in a couple of cloves of garlic. I didn't get them before I went on camera, but I'll probably throw them in off camera. But I'll have the measurements down below with everything else. And then... You would just saute that off a few minutes until your onions start to become transparent and, and softening up and the bell peppers as well. So, having said that, I'm going to get this fire going up under here. Let's get it hot and I'll bring you back. I'm going to give this a good stir. Okay, after I gave that a good stir, I'm going to go ahead and just put all my spices in and then, of course, give it another good stir. We'll go from there. I don't overly salt because it depends on my cheese I'm using. So I only taste afterwards and then I'll go in and you can salt and pepper to taste. So this, these are just guidelines that I'm going by, all right? Now, after I give this a good stir, I'm gonna add the milk and we're gonna heat this up and then I'll put in the pasta. And y'all know, if you've been watching me a while and if you hadn't, forgive me. Sometimes I'll forget to mention something on camera always go by the recipe I have listed below, okay? If you will do that, and while you're down there, just go ahead and 
that thumbs up. <laughs> I would appreciate that. And thank you for that as well. All right, we're getting hot, so I want to get this milk in. I'll bring you back when I'm ready to put the pasta in. I'm going with my milk. I already measured this. This cart was empty. This is why I just put the milk back in here. I emptied it out measuring it, and then I just said, oh, I'll put it back in there. Easier to pour. All right. Oop. Don't want to splash. Make a mess. All right. Giving this a good stir. I'll also, I'll go over my cheese amounts, of course, but I like to use a mix. I don't have any pepper jack, or I'd put some pepper jack in there, too, but I'm, today I'm using mozzarella and sharp cheddar, but that won't go in until the end. It's a nice, good stir. And what I, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the lid on to this pot. I'm gonna let it come up to a high simmer. I'm not trying to boil it. And when I come up to that high simmer, I'm gonna let it go covered in the beginning for, I don't know, six, seven minutes. And then we'll uncover it and then it'll start to cook down and get nice and thick. Okay. I'll bring you back when it's time for that. <laughs> Okie dokie, it's been about six minutes. I gave it a, a, a good stir. I'm on a medium low simmer. That's a good medium simmer. It's actually a little on the hot side, but I kind of want it that way. So it, don't go by, forget the word simmer. We're going with uh, like a medium to medium low. Uh, I'm probably even gonna cut this down just a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the lid back on this for about another five minutes, and then we will finish it off. I'll show you how I finish it off anyway. I take the lid off, I leave the lid on for a part of the time, and I go back and forth on my time on that. It's always six or seven minutes, but sometimes I go 10 to 12 minutes, and then I finish it up with the lid off, okay, until it gets to the thickened, uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just get there first, okay? Then going back on for about another five minutes. One other thing I wanted to add. It's awkward around this tripod. Okay, one thing I wanted to add is I am not sticking at the bottom. You do want to give it a stir. You don't have to sit here and babysit it or anything like that. But you do want to come in and give it a little stir and make sure you're not sticking. If you're sticking, you need to cut your fire down even uh, a little lower. Okay, so I am going to cut mine down just a little bit. Uh, just a hair, not much. So it is going to still be considered on a medium low. All right. I just wanted to add that. Just check it. Stir through the middle. A flat bottomed, anything like that. Flat bottomed. We've gone over that before. Uh, this is a non-stick, so I wouldn't be using a metal utensil in this. But, you know, you might be using cast iron. So might, that might not matter. Anyway, as you can see, I'm not sticking at all. Nice and moist. Lid going back on for real this time. I'll, co I'll come back in about five, five, six minutes. I'll let you know. It's been another five minutes. I took that lid off. As you can see, we're still nice and moist. And now uh, I'm going to let finish this until the pasta is al dente. The elbow macaroni, when it's al dente, I'll give you an idea about how many minutes that took. So far, I think we're at, I don't know, 11-ish minutes, give or take. So it's not going to take long. I don't know, four or five minutes maybe. We'll see. Uh, I hadn't tested it yet, so I will do that off camera. And then we'll start adding our cheese and all that fun stuff. I want to make one more mention. Something I thought of. Because when I measure my stuff, I'm making this supper anyway. And I wanted to mention something. You know, I use, uh, I have, I'm, I'm using a lower, not, not no sodium, not low, low, low sodium reduced sodium soup base, all right? I also am using kosher salt. So it looked like I was putting a lot of salt in there, but it was kosher salt. Also, again, my broth was reduced sodium. You don't want to just salt it up. I'd rather go under on the salt. And again, if you're using table salt, sorry, that's Sprite talking. Um, yeah, I know, I'm talking right now. Okay, I'm talking, so you're talking to me. Sorry about that, guys. She's my sweet little calico. Okay, um, anyway, I just wanted to say, go by what I have down below. I'll give you even uh, a difference for the kosher as opposed to just regular table salt, too. 
All right, I wanted to know, I mentioned that, because I don't want people dumping a whole salt shaker full in here and then blaming me when it's too salty. And also, that is determined upon, what I was trying to explain earlier, is, you know, your cheese has salt in it, so you want to also not overkill with the salt until you have your cheese blend in there. So, having said those two things, and I, boy, I say so a lot, don't I? I say alrighty a lot and okay a lot, too. Oh, well, guys, I am just me. That This is who I am. I hope it doesn't bother you too bad. I'm just trying to share with you what I know. So, and I said so again. Gosh, caught myself again. <laughs> so, 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 so. All right. And I said, all right. I didn't say all right, T, but I normally do. We'll bring you back in about five minutes. It's been about four minutes, and I want to show you what I'm going with today. I've got a little over three cups. This is just what I had left off of a block of sharp cheddar. I, gra I grated this myself. This is uh, about a cup of mozzarella I had, and this is what I'm going to go with today. Uh, like I said earlier, I love to add pepper jack. There's all kinds. Of, I change it up all the time. But anyway, as you can see, uh, this is al dente. I did check it, and guess what? The fire is now off, completely off, and I'm going to come in here. I'm, I'm trying to scatter on purpose to distribute that mozzarella a little, bit, a little better. And I'm not going to just clunk it all in here. I'm trying to sprinkle. I'm going to stir, and I'll come back in again. But I, you don't need the heat on at this point. You see, and this is going to help finish uh, thickening it up. The cornstarch did its trick, as you can see. Look at that. Perfect. I beat the crap out of this old pan already. Hadn't had it that long. I'm really kind of disappointed in it. I thought I was going to be crazy for it. It's just not heavy duty enough. But it's it's what y'all can see on camera. So I figure it works for everybody. I'm not fancy smancy. I've got some nice pots and pans. And then I have my ones I like to use. Okay, now I'm reserving. That's probably one and a quarter cup. I'm gonna put that on top after I stir this back in. Again, the lid completely off. I guess it helped. I held it, but I've got this tripod in the middle of me. All right, now. Sorry for clanking that. I'm gonna sprinkle the rest of this cheddar on top. You get the idea, I'll bring you right back and edit down for time. Oh well, I'm done already. I'm gonna let it camera, I'm not gonna edit this out. It's just awkward, I'm reaching around this tripod. <laughs> All right. Now the lid's gonna go on. And guess what? It's gonna sit there just like that for about eight to 10 minutes while I finish up. I'm just gonna have it with a salad tonight. You can eat it with cornbread, it's good. You can eat it in a bowl, you can eat it on a plate. Just however, you can eat it with a spoon, eat it with a fork, however you eat your hamburger helper. Chili mac cheeseburger slash hamburger helper-ish dish. But it's better than, for sure. <laughs> Hence the name. Okay, when it's all melted and I'm ready to dish up a plate or a bowl, I'll bring you back. All right, y'all. The moment of truth. Look at that. Yes, I had a sneak taste. This is so good. Let me dish you up some. We're just going to put ours in a bowl today. It's thick enough you could have it on a plate with vegetables if you want to do. I think we're going to throw in some uh, green beans and corn or something. But look at that. I want you to see this. This is so, so so good. Like I said, I made a triple recipe. It keeps well. I do recommend that you try this. And I do think you're going to really, really love it. I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.